Good morning, Sophie Good morning. and Ellie. Thank you very much for coming in this morning. I'm Elaine, as you know, and I think is this Alex, Ellie's brother. So what we're here to do this morning is to examine Ellie's chest. So the first thing we want to do is just simply observe Ellie sitting on her mum's knee. And I'm going to start off doing that sitting down because small children don't like tall adults looming over them. So if you're sitting down, it puts you on more or less the same level as the child and it's obviously less threatening. I'm also going to start at a little distance from her, so it gives her an opportunity to get to know me before I have to move in further and do the um, more detailed part of the examination. So just looking at her there, I can see that she looks lovely and comfortable. She's happy and smiling and very alert. And she's not using anything to help her breathe in, for example, oxygen, and she doesn't seem to have brought any inhalers with her. I'm now going to move in a little bit closer so that I can look at her hands. Oh, what was that? That was fun, wasn't it? Do you want some? I'll put some on you. Let's look at your hands. Are these your little pandas? Let's count those little pinkies, eh? Oh, yes. And I can see her hands feel nice and warm and that they're a lovely colour. And if I do a capillary refill time in this way, then I can see that it was less than two seconds. So that tells me that she's well perfused, which is really important. Next, we want to assess for hydration. So I'm feeling her fontanelle. I'm looking at her eyes, which are bright and shiny. Inside her mouth, it looks nice and damp and wet, so that all looks good. And if we do um, a, a little skin turga, we can see that bounces back nicely. So she's very well hydrated. OK, so that concludes our first initial observations. And I now want to have a look at her chest. So would it be all right to just slip her top things off, please, okay. Sophie? And I should also point out at this point that her breathing sounds nice and normal. Uh, it sounds nice, quiet breathing, not noisy. Noisy breathing means that there's something wrong. Breathing should be quiet. Also, I can tell she doesn't have a cough, which is another important point to notice. OK. So... We'll now commence our second set of observations. And what I'm looking at is just looking at her chest straight on. And I'm first of all looking for expansion. And I can see that her chest is expanding nicely on both sides and it's roughly equal. In an adult, we often actually put our hands on the chest to check the expansion in this sort of way. But because she's only little, uh, she's too small to do that. So it's best just to do it by observing. I can also see there are no signs of respiratory distress and what I'm actually looking for is to see if there's any intercostal or subcostal recession, if there's any tracheal tug or abdominal breathing and there's none of those things. The next thing I want to count a respiratory rate and I've got my watch set here and uh, we normally count it for about 30 seconds. So I'm starting watching now. And just while we're watching, just to remind everyone that when a child is born, they have quite a fast uh, respiratory rate, uh, more than twice as fast as an adult's. And then through the child's life, the rate gradually goes down until uh, ad till adolescence when it becomes the same as an adult. So that's about 30 seconds. And counting the respiratory rate, it came out at about 25, which is about right for a child of her age. OK, so we're going to move on to auscultation now. And when um, auscultating a child's chest, it's important to remember that the heart has a larger surface area than in an adult. So you need to listen a little bit round the edge of the chest so that you're getting the lungs. Can I have a little listen? Just start there. a little tap. You are a good girl, aren't you? Mm. <sighs> okay. Can we listen at the back, please, if we just yes. turn around a bit? What's that? What am I doing? Okay. <laughs> Well done. 
clever girl. And percussion the same, in the same places. So you notice that we start auscultating near the top and we make sure that we listen in opposite areas all the way down, comparing each side and making sure we avoid listening over the spine. So a chest sounded lovely and clear. So that concludes our examination. She's got a nice, normal chest. Thank you very much. Remember when examining the chest to start with general observations. So you're noting the general well-being and colour of the child. You need to note any accessory equipment and note the perfusion and hydration status. Then move on to specific observations of the chest, noting any signs of respiratory distress, count the respiratory rate and note the chest expansion and listen for extra clues such as cough or noisy breathing. These are suitable positions to auscultate and percuss the chest. Remember when listening that the heart has a larger surface area in a child than in an adult. At the back of the chest, remember to avoid listening over the spine. The respiratory rate of a child is faster than an adult. It is fastest at birth and gradually decreases over the child's life until reaching adult values at adolescence.